On this topic, I get a lot of questions, usually one of these. I recently have discovered that I have metal allergy and I need a knee or hip replacement in the near future. So what now? Or number two, I recently have discovered that I have metal allergy, but I already have a knee or hip prosthesis. So what now? Will I reject my prosthesis? Well, I will tell you, but first I have to give you a short explanation on what allergy or hypersensitivity to metal exactly is. Basically, there exist two types of allergy that are relevant here for understanding. The first one, the type 1 allergy, is the allergy we all know about. It is the most common form of allergy, like allergy to pollen, as in hay fever, or food allergies, such as to shellfish or peanuts, or allergy to pets, cats or dogs, or the allergy to a bee sting or a wasp sting. That are all type 1 allergies. They occur fast, with an immediate reaction by the body within minutes or hours after the exposure. And that is because they work through EGE antibodies, which cause mast cell degranulation and the release of histamine that provokes all the symptoms you know of. The diagnosis for type 1 allergy is made by skin prick test that contains the antigen, or with a blood sample that determines the presence of EGE. The treatment is with epinephrine or corticosteroid injection in case the allergy is life-threatening. Or, if it is more mild, by the standard medications for allergy that you can find in the pharmacy and which interfere with the biological cascade induced by EGE. The most common are the antihistamine drugs, mast cell stabilizers or anti-locotrienes. Now, metal allergy is completely different. That is a type 4 allergy and it is typical for nickel, cobalt and chrome, which indeed are base materials for many joint replacements. Other type 4 allergies are perfume allergies, or allergy against jewelry or piercings, which is most often actually an allergy against the nickel inside. Type 4 allergies have a delayed reaction, usually after a few days or even slower, because they are cell mediated, so not by EGE, but by lymphocytes, which is a whole different mechanism that is much slower. The diagnosis is made by skin patch testing, which show up positive after a couple of days. The treatment is much more difficult than type 1 allergies, since none of the standard medications work here, again, because the allergy mechanism has a completely different biological pathway compared to type 1 allergies. The only medication that works are corticosteroids, but these have a lot of side effects, so avoiding exposure, if possible, is really important here. Metal allergy is quite common in the general population. If you test with skin patches, then 10 to 20% show an allergic reaction. 14% for nickel, 10% for cobalt, and 5% for chrome. Important to note is that nickel causes cross allergy for cobalt and chrome. That is why so many people have combined allergies for several metals. Now interesting, if we do the same skin patch testing in patients that have already undergone knee or hip replacement, we see that these numbers are substantially higher. After knee replacement, the percentage of patients with positive skin patch testing becomes doubled, between 20 and 45%, so substantially higher than the 10 to 20% in people without a hip or knee replacement. So that means that, just by receiving a knee or hip replacement, an extra 10 to 25% of people develop metal allergy. And if the prosthesis is not functioning well, it is even more, 60% of people with poorly performing prosthesis develop metal allergy when you test them with skin patches. So that means that a number of people, just by receiving a hip or knee prosthesis, develop metal allergy or metal hypersensitivity. Now you may wonder, is this a problem? Because it could mean that these people may, at a certain point, start to react to their metal prosthesis. Well, in fact, in the vast majority of patients, that is not a problem. There is no effect or reaction to their metal implants. In my experience, that is the case in 97-98% to 98 of patients. Some patients, however, a small minority, about 1-3%, to 3 they do get hypersensitized and react to their prosthesis. And in some exceptional cases, less than 0.3%, the opposite occurs. They become more tolerant to the metal, or desensitized. We know that because we then see a reduction in their T-lymphocytes. Now, why this variability? Why do some people get metal sensitized by their prosthesis, while the majority is not? Well, that is dependent on their genetic predisposition, their DNA. 
and on the amount of metal ions released from the metal implant, which is greater if the implant is poorly functioning. That is why people with poorly functioning prosthesis develop more metal sensitivity or allergy. Now most people think that metal allergy would lead to a skin rash, pruritus, itchiness, redness or eczema over the joint, but in fact that is very seldom. Most often the allergy or metal sensitivity does not show up as a skin rash, but rather as a constant nagging pain or discomfort in or around the joint that was replaced. Now, what does that all mean? Well, let's go back to the questions at the beginning of this video. Number one, you have reasons to believe that you have metal allergy, because for example you are allergic to jewels that contain nickel, and you need a knee or hip prosthesis. Well, first, you should really do a skin patch test to confirm. And two, you should ask your surgeon for a cobalt chrome nickel free prosthesis, so without cobalt chrome or nickel in it. And these exist. Here you see a knee prosthesis which consists of oxidized zirconium, but you also have alternatives, such as titanium niobium. These are really anti-allergic prosthesis that contain no or almost no cobalt, chrome or nickel, and are therefore very pie compatible, with no allergies associated. Now, sometimes your surgeon may not be convinced that you are metal allergic. Some surgeons even believe that metal allergy is overrated, and think that, even if you would be metal allergic, using a conventional prosthesis containing cobalt and chrome never causes a problem in their experience. And that is sad, because studies have shown that if you are allergic to metals and you get a conventional prosthesis implanted, which contains cobalt and chrome, then you have a four times higher risk for implant failure. So you need to be sure, and in case there is doubt, Consider genetic testing to determine whether you have high-risk genes for metal hypersensitivity. Such genetic testing has recently become possible. It was developed based on very solid research by a consortium of medical researchers from the UK, North America and Australia. The second scenario. You have reasons to believe that you are metal allergic, but you already have a knee or hip prosthesis implanted, because at the time of the surgery, you did not know or were not asked about your metal allergy. And now you are concerned that sooner or later you may start to react against your prosthesis because it contains cobalt, chrome or nickel. First of all, if you experience no pain or discomfort and your prosthesis is functioning well, don't worry. You are like the overwhelming vast majority of metal allergy patients, the 97-98%, to 98 that do not develop and will never develop a negative reaction to their prosthesis. So no worries, forget about it. If you do have pain or discomfort at your prosthesis, first exclude all other causes of persistent pain. I have made a separate video on this, you may want to have a look at it. And also here, consider genetic testing to find out if you have high-risk genes for metal hypersensitivity. If you test positive for high-risk genes, and there are seemingly no other causes for the pain or discomfort, that is not so good news, because then there is a substantial chance that your metal allergy is at least partly the cause of the pain or discomfort, and unfortunately there is not so much you can do about that. You could try to take corticosteroids or one of the new immunosuppressive therapies, but these are all heavy medications with a lot of side effects, which means that in the long term you may need to consider accepting the situation rather than taking these drugs chronically. A drastic option is reoperation, with removal of the prosthesis and replacing it with a new cobalt, chrome and nickel free implant out of oxidized zirconium or titanium niobium. That is of course big surgery, and as with all big surgeries, the outcome is not always as one had wished for. So with this, I hope to have clarified this matter. Thank you for watching.